Hey everybody, it's your boy Holy Joe Rock and Roll coming at you live and unscripted. The man with the tan who's always got a plan. I wanted to give you my thoughts on my recent visit again to Rome. First let me preface my remarks with saying that I've been to Rome probably 15 times starting as a small child. <clears throat> and uh, let me just say Rome has changed a lot. And I don't mean the architecture, I don't mean the ruins, although they have changed. I mean, it has changed, but it's still a great city to go to. Couple of points, July and August, oh my God, it is so hot. Unless you're from Texas or Florida or you're just used to really hot heat, it'll take you probably a day or two to get adjusted because it was a uh, 10 centigrade or more degrees difference from what I'm used to in Poland, what I've become used to in Poland. So really it took about a day or two to really get adjusted to the hot heat, especially in Rome or any of the cities where that heat just absorbs into the concrete and into the marble, into the, to the buildings and the floor and whatever. Um, okay, off the bat, <laughs> I'm going to show you where I stayed. Excellent location on using bookings.com. Got an excellent apartment with a kitchen two bedrooms plus a living room tv room which had a bed so really three bedrooms if you want to call it that three rooms where people could sleep um, air conditioning wi-fi really great host stefan was the is the owner and really did a great job making us comfortable so bookings.com and i'll put a link to it you can see where it is it's 80 meters from the castle here's the map oh the castle saint An An Angelo, 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 I'll put it on the map. Real, literally 80 minute, 80, 80, literally 80 meters walk from the castle and a five minute walk to St. Peter's Square. So it's a really great location if you wanted to be in that area. Uh, about a 10 minute walk to the Otto Avano Metro stop. And from there, you can connect to any, any of the monuments, really like the Coliseum, Gotta switch trains at Terminine, the terminal, the main train station, but it's for a one euro fifty per trip. It's very inexpensive and it's very fast and it's air conditioned and it's pretty comfortable. Pretty comfortable. Um, okay, first off, if you're in the touristy area and even out of the touristy area, one thing that I noticed about Rome is there's so many freaking foreigners there. And I don't mean visitors, I mean third world refugees working there. Okay, maybe they're not all refugees, but definitely people in the street, they... Okay, look, you got African guys selling purses. That seems to be their job. Selling knockoff purses. That seems to be what the Africans are doing. The African immigrants or refugees or whatever they are. Uh, in the main tourist area, it would seem to be Indian or Bangladesh or Pakistan. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But Indian-looking people doing most of the selling of the trinkets and crap that you don't really need in the main square also trying to get you to go on different excursion trips and whatnot <clears throat> also most of these restaurants now there is a restaurant on this one street over from the hotel that I know for a fact I ate there probably as an 11 or 12 year old boy I ate there with my family and it was all Italians all Italians everything was all Italians today it's all third world immigrants and the food was not that good okay pizza was undercooked uh, one of my sons had spaghetti carbonari actually not so bad other son had bolognese a bit oily greasy uh, what else and very expensive obviously it's in a touristy area it's very expensive relative to what I'm used to and um, pretty expensive now if you get outside the center um, we went to another place, and I'll put a, a link to it below, or a picture of it. About 10, 10 or 12 kilometers outside the center, into what I would call the, the suburbs. I did a video earlier. It's very close to the metro stop, uh, Saint Basilica St. Peter. Very close to that metro stop. It's the only one in Rome. And they have a prefix menu. There's several different options, but the one that we took is 13 euros 50. You get a, a, a little drink, uh, like a starter drink, a aperitif, aperitif, they call it. You get uh, uh, the bread with the tomatoes on it and, and basil. 
I forget what they call that. Brojeta, bro, brojeta, brojetka. Uh, choice of a pizza, a drink, could be soft drink, water, uh, maybe beer, I'm not sure, and dessert. And that's really, really well worth it. Very good pizza, very good. Um, what they had was very good, very delicious. I recommend that place. It was called Pomidore e Mozzarella. So tomato and mozzarella cheese. That was far away from the center, but probably about as far away as you can get without leaving the city. Well, not really, but definitely far away. And there were still plenty of foreigners there, even though most of the staff was Italian. Now we did eat in a restaurant in the center, right, you know, 10 minute walk from St. Peter's Basilica. Seemed to be an Italian restaurant owned by Italians, but the guy cooking the pizza was from India, okay, or Bangladesh, or wherever he was from. Uh, everything was pretty okay, except there I tried spaghetti alla carbonara, and it was horrible. It was so much salt in it. They didn't use prosciutto. They used bacon. Now, you want to call it whatever you want to call it. It was definitely not prosciutto, okay? It was just fat styrated, striated, you know, bacon, fat, a little bit of meat, fat, a little bit of fat meat, right? And it was just so salty, and it was like eight euros. So it was very expensive for what you got. Um, anyhow, I took off the meat and ate the spaghetti and drank a lot of water. Um, so what I was expecting was, you know, memories from my childhood. You know, you go to Italy, you expect to be greeted by Italians, but Probably like in a lot of places, the hired help is now third world immigrants who can't get any other job and the Italians are, are either unemployed or doing hopefully higher value jobs, hopefully. You know, there's quite a bit of unemployment in Italy, but maybe they're working in the black market, gray market, I don't know, underground and not reporting their income. But um, getting around Rome by the metro is, is very easy and definitely recommended. You know, taxis are relatively expensive. Not super expensive, but they're, you know, you're paying in euros and a short trip might be 10 euros. So that's like 12 bucks. So, you know, and you could walk it, you could probably walk it in about 45 minutes, 30 minutes if you're single. If you got kids, it took us about an hour. Not quite an hour to walk the same distance, uh, but it was super hot and we had kids, so. Just to give you an idea, that was uh, an hour walk, probably about two and a half kilometers. What's about a, two and a half kilometers, about a mile, a little over a mile and a half to get back to the hotel. Oh, this uh, this Trava, Trava district, that's where you're going to know, that's where supposedly you're, you're still in a touristy district, but you're not in the main tourist area. And it's a lot of restaurants more reasonably priced. They claim that they have Italian food, it's real Italian food, or real real Rome food. But again, most of the hired help is not Italian. I'm just telling you, I'm just letting you know. Don't be shocked when you go there and you feel like you're in India, or you're in New York City, or something like that. So, not hating on the people, I'm just saying that's, that's what you sh can expect. Now, um, we took the metro to see Plaza del Popolo. We took the metro also to see the Colosseum, and there is a stop called Colosio, 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 which is the Colosseum. From there, you can see the Colosseum, and you can also see the Forum area, and and walk around there. You can also get to the Circus Maximus, and you can do all this walking, uh, all of this in a walking dis distance. You know this map here. You know this the distance between. This circle and the castle is 80 meters, so it's really very, very close. It looks like it's far away, but from from here to here, you know, you cross the bridge, probably take you about 20 minutes just to cross over. So it's actually very close. It took us an hour to walk this way down here to Trevier, wherever this area is called down here. Just to kind of give you an idea. Hopefully you can see that. Um, the main train station, what, what can I say? Uh, oh. There's flat fees for taxis, so if you're coming from the, gosh, I can't remember, I didn't come on that airport, or airport, but the two main airports, the main international airport, I think the fixed fee, I didn't take that, but I think it's 48 euros, and if you come from Champignon, Champignon, 
is 30 euros to the center. So that's pretty reasonable. I did it by combination of bus. I took the bus, it was 3 euros 90, got me to the main train station, and then I took a metro to a different spot. And that was a 150, so that's four or five, 550. So you can do it for about five, five euros 50, but you know, if you're traveling with your family, take a taxi or Uber, Uber Black, right? You can take Uber and you, there you have professional drivers, um, licensed professional drivers. There is no Uber Pop, it's not allowed in Italy. And it's roughly the same price as a taxi, but you're gonna get probably an E-Class Mercedes or a more luxurious car. So think about that if you're in Rome and you want to move around. Um, what else can I tell you? You know, just a lot of the a lot of the monuments are being renovated. The fountain, the, the three coins in the fountain, fountain, fountain Trevia, I think it's called, is uh, under under renovation. So you can see it, but it's under renovation. You can't really get to it. It's all glassed off. That's something to be concerned about. This is July 2015, as I talk to you. Uh, what else? The Colosseum is under some renovation, I guess stage by stage. I, I've been told that they are planning on renovating the Colosseum and actually using it for Summer Olympics. Could be interesting. Could be really interesting. Um, what else? There are fountains, free aqueduct water coming into the city, dripping out of these, not, not dripping, but actually pouring out nonstop from various fountains all over the city. And it's clean water, you can drink it, and I recommend that, especially if you're there for the hot months, have yourself a bottle of water, or and if you, if you drink it all, save the empty bottle and use it to fill up. And a lot of people go there and splash some water on their face, cool down, just real quick. It, it, it's clean water and it's amazing to see these things still working, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years later. Um, I have another video about Rome, and I'll put a link to it down below on my previous trip. But, you know, there's one thing that you can take away from, especially if you go to the Colosseum and the Forum area, and just recognize that this civilization, Rome, first there was Egypt, then there was Greece, and then there was Rome. And the Roman Empire, you know, over a thousand years before the birth of Ahmed, also known as Muhammad, pre-Islamic history, created a civilization that still influences us today, okay? Still influences us today and has, in, you know, in, in everything, in military, in medicine, in law, Rome, okay, people? Nothing has changed. Really, nothing has changed, all right? Now, think about what caused the collapse of Rome. It's a couple of things they're, they're saying. It wasn't Christianity. No, it wasn't. What happened was the Germanic barbarians, who tended to be horsemen, were granted citizenship. But they had no allegiance to Rome. They had no cultural allegiance to Rome at that time. And that's number one. And later on, various barbarian, barbarian tribes just raided into Rome. Uh, illegal immigration, you could call it. It wasn't just military, it was people. Hordes and hordes of people coming to Rome, they wanted to enjoy that civilization and reap the benefits, but without contributing much. And Rome went from a city of over a million people to 20,000 people. And why we have these ruins today that have been preserved, it's kind of almost by accident. You know, if Rome didn't fall, maybe these ruins would have disappeared. But what happened is, as the city collapsed, Rome, Roman Empire collapsed, people left, um, the Tiberus River flooded and brought with it mud and all kinds of stuff, flooded into Rome and covered a lot of these places with mud. And then people just built on top of them. So obviously in later generations, people would, uh, instead of excavating stone for their buildings, it was easier to quarry it from these ancient monuments, which were there. A lot of them made out of marble. It's easy to just go there, grab a piece of marble, chop it up, bring it and build steps or make a sink, whatever. So we, luckily we have all these architectural, you know, evidence of this Roman culture, this Roman civilization. 
which has, as I said, influenced Western society and, and beyond, um, starting at over 500 BC. It's just an incredible adventure, it's an incredible trip, and it, I really recommend that everybody, at least once in their life, should get to Rome, see these monuments, see these, see the ancient evidence of this civilization, Rome, the Roman Empire, and what it had built so long ago, which is still relevant today. All right, those are my thoughts on Rome. I'm Holo Joe Rock and Roll Safe Travels, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.